Hello and welcome to today's video. Uh, today we are focusing on, well, financial strength and viability uh, of a new company. So we're going to look at how we might assess a new company or a new venture's financial strength and viability. And this is following on from our uh, uh, video last week on how we might get funding for a new company. Uh, some learning objectives there, and um, we'll, we'll go through them all uh, uh, in today's um, video. So we're going to look off. Uh, look off. <laughs> we're going to start off uh, with financial management and and just basic and and we should say that this video is really focusing on the basics. It's open to give you an introduction to some key terms and concepts. And of course, if you're part of my class, you will have an assessment, and in that assessment, you will be uh, doing a a forecast or budget for your uh, new business idea. But um, yeah, this this video really is just focusing on key terms, introducing you to the to uh, uh, financial management terms of a new company. So, financial management itself deals with two things: uh, raising money and managing a company's finances. Let me say managing them in such a way that it achieves the highest rate of return. And of course, rate of return is how much money we are getting back compared to how much we invested. Oh, sorry. So in the last chapter, of course, we focused on how to raise money and we'll be referring back to a couple of those things. And we'll be referring back to a couple of chapters and videos that we've done already this year, just again to use examples where we might, uh, they might be useful for, for looking at the terms that we're using today. So again, this video or chapter uh, and our classes will focus primarily on how our new company tracks its financial progress uh, and that is done through preparing, analyzing and maintaining past financial statements and while maybe not the most exciting part of, of entrepreneurialism uh, for some people it's a very necessary part of it as well and uh, we know that from all the work that we've done on um, financial feasibility and, and uh, you know even in in the value chain we we are we're assessing each link of the chain to see where we can essentially improve profits and in the industry analysis we're you know looking at the industry to see how profitable it is and and um, is there ways of determining how profitable it is and of course like everything uh, whether it's marketing and sales, uh, somehow it, it comes back to financial management too. Uh, so how a company uh, forecasts future income and expenses by preparing pro forma uh, projected financial statements. And, and again, we're introducing those terms. So uh, while we might not go into huge detail today, it's, it's all about just getting a good understanding. So the financial management of a company deals with uh, questions such as the following really on, a, on an ongoing basis. So, so we're always asking these questions a bit like we're always looking at our, our value chain and our marketing and our industry analysis. Of course, financial management is, is, is constantly asking the question of how are we doing and, and are we making or losing money? And of course, that is important to the very existence of our business. Uh, how much cash do we have in hand? And of course, that's if, if um, uh, when we say cash, it's it's readily available money. Uh, do we have enough cash to meet our short-term obligations? And I guess what we mean by short-term obligations are things like that have to be paid in the very near future, like maybe rent or or paying our suppliers for our equipment. Uh, to produce our products or services. How efficiently are we utilizing our assets? And we'll look at efficiency in a moment and look at that specifically. Uh, how, how do our growth and net profits compare to those of our industry peers? And as we always like to do in, in business and in entrepreneurship is looking at our competitors to see how we're doing relative to, to our competitors. Uh, and where will we fund 
no, sorry, where will the funds be needed for capital improvements come? And of course, capital improvements are things like uh, improving building, improving equipment, uh, that equipment might be linked to research and development, technology. Um, so where, where does the money for that come in? And are we generating enough money? Are we putting away enough money uh, for the future uh, capital developments? Okay. Uh, are there ways we can partner with other companies to share risks and reduce the amount of cash? And overall, are we in good shape financially? And, and that's the essence, I guess, of uh, financial management. Are we in good shape financially? So again, some terms that we look at here. Uh, and I think in your assessment, you will have to uh, write a short paragraph or chapter on each of these. And we'll go into them in more detail in a moment in the following slides, but uh, the first term is profitability, and that's a company's ability to make a profit. Uh, liquidity refers to a company's ability to meet its short-term obligations, which we sort of explained already, maybe uh, things that are, are need paying in the very near future. Uh, efficiency, how productively a firm utilizes its assets. And, Again, we're going to look at that in a second. Uh, and stability, which is the overall health of the financial structure of the company, uh, particularly as it relates to debt to equity ratio. So profitability, as we said, is the ability to earn profit. And, you know, it's worth noting that many startups or many new companies or new ventures are not necessarily profitable during their first one or two or three years. Uh, and this is down to a number of reasons. While they're training employees, building their brand, they may have bought equipment like laptops and software, and these need to be paid off. And uh, so it's, it's quite common uh, that we don't turn a profit for the first couple of years. And, um, you know, that in itself may seem daunting, but that's the reality of it. And that's why we get loans and why we we uh, get investment and seek investment. And, uh, you know, it's it's to be able to start building up a good customer base and, and getting our product out there. And it takes time for for these things to happen, as, as we know from uh, all the other chapters and areas that we've covered in entrepreneurship to date. It's not expected that... Uh, customers sh should start using your product straight away unless it's extremely desirable and extreme demand. Uh, you you have to break into the market and, and uh, that can take time as well. Uh, and, and of course we've often used um, the pharmaceutical industry which probably could be 10 years to 15 years before, um, before uh, you start you know making a big profit and, and uh, that's because the nature of developing drugs is quite a, a long process due to the testing phase and, uh, and ethics and different things and intellectual property it can take a long time and uh, you know so it needs a lot of investment to get it to uh, the stage of becoming profitable uh, and that should be said of course a company must be profitable to remain viable and provide a return to its owners. So of course, uh, we want it to be profitable someday, else we will have no money. Liquidity uh, just refers to a company's ability to meet its short-term financial obligations. And you know, uh, even if a, we can say this, even if a company is profitable, it is often a challenge to keep enough money in the bank to meet its routine obligations in a timely manner. And I guess, I guess from my own uh, experience in running a digital marketing company, one of the difficult things was having enough money in the bank constantly to ensure even at the end of the month that your your uh, staff would be paid and, and any overheads would be paid uh, and while even the company may have been in a, a, a relatively good state of affairs that was always a uh, you know a challenge to ensure that that was was done that you were able to meet your short-term obligation so a uh, company is I guess, uh, always uh, in sh looking at its liquidity. So efficiency, which we've mentioned twice now and sort of floated over it, we deal with it, is how productively a company utilizes its 
utilizes its assets relative to its revenue and its profits. And what we mean by that there is, you know, are we using uh, everything in our company in the most beneficial way? Uh, and, and particularly relative to revenue and profit. So we've got money, um, but are we reinvesting wisely or are we using our um, uh, fixed assets wisely? Are we using our staff wisely? So, for example, you know, even I'm trying to think of a, a simple example here, but if I was uh, working in a restaurant and, and uh, you know, my waiters are standing, waitresses and waiters are standing around, uh, for a lot of the time, then we can say we're not really utilizing them. We probably have too many waiters and waitresses on that shift. So we might look at uh, reducing, taking away two or three waiters or waitresses. And that's why they are uh, more often than not when you go to a business, uh, a restaurant always busy because, you know, they should be utilized to, to their most effective. And that is where, you know, they, they are busy and everybody is is being looked after but no waitresses or waiters are standing around and the same with chefs and, and uh, it's just an example from the restaurant industry of course in the uh, southwest airlines is, is uh, a widely used one is a good example for where it uses its assets very productively and that is in its turnaround time uh, it makes up a lot of its time which is an, a, a hugely important element of the airline industry uh, uh, because it does not sit in the ground for a long time. Uh, it's when it's been loaded on unloaded. Uh, so they use their staff very well. And efficiency is really, you know, how efficient are we using our staff or equipment? Are we getting the best out of it? You know, there's no point in, in having uh, an expensive piece of equipment if we're not using it to the best or maximum of its potential. And, and we do that, that's financial management, we, we look at these things. And then we said stability is the overall strength and vigor of, of a company's financial posture or stance, I guess. Uh, for a company to be stable, it must not only earn a profit and remain liquid, but also keep its debt in check. So we're looking at our debts as well. You always uh, tend to be looking at your debts, um, especially if, if you're new and you have taken out loans or, or investment, you're, always looking at potential debt and of course um, never seems to go, go away because when you grow you tend to accrue more debt or get more debt and, and uh, uh, so we're always looking in financial management at profit, liquidity and debt and uh, so that's sort of just an introduction to those four terms again as I say you we discuss them in class a little bit more relevant to your mobile apps that you're all developing uh, for part of your assessment but uh, that's just an introduction and the process of financial management and we're going to look at that uh, now for a few moments so we look at the importance of financial statements and to assess whether uh, financial objectives are being met companies rely heavily on analysis of financial statements and I know this may seem a little boring uh, and maybe to some it's very exciting uh, Warren Buffett, a great investor, loves reading financial statements. It was never my favourite pastime, not going to lie to you. Uh, but a financial statement is a written report that quantitatively, as opposed to qualitatively, which is more opinion-based, quantitatively, which is more hard fact-based, describes a company's financial health. So quantitatively, it's written down in figures, and that's how we can review it. We can see very much matter of fact that that is the profit or that is the loss or that's how much we've made in sales or that's how many sales we've had. These are very hard and fact figures and financial statements keep them and they are good for us to look at to assess well yes this is how well the business is, or business is doing or not. And uh, the income statement, the balance sheet, the statements of cash flows are the financial statements entrepreneurs use most commonly and we'll, we'll describe these for both. Uh, historical statements and uh, forecasts and we'll do that shortly but we should just mention what a forecast is and of course uh, for most of you non-financial people when we say forecast we think of the weather forecast and here in Bahrain where I am currently with my class we can say the weather forecast tomorrow is sunny <laughs> whereas when I'm back in Ireland we love to 
talk about the weather forecast and we normally can guess that it's going to be wet tomorrow. <laughs> In financial forecasts, we are doing a very similar thing. We are trying to estimate a company's future income and expense. Not really the same thing, but I guess the fundamental of estimating, trying to guess uh, what the future is based on uh, the evidence that we have to hand, and that is really what forecasting is. We're trying to um, uh, predict the future based on past performance and current circumstances. And that's what we do in finances, and I think we talked about that before in the... Uh, um, Oh, maybe it was um, feasibility analysis, financial feasibility, and I th and indeed actually business models as well, where we talked about how um, you know traditional computer manufacturers would have forecast sales by predicting, you know, how many computers am I going to sell this week? Well, to guess that the right answer to that question, I would look at last year's figures and see how many um, computers I sold in particular areas, and is there any reason uh, this year that that would change? And of course, with COVID at the moment, um, we, that would make us change our forecasts because we might say well uh, sales have been down uh, in the last three or four or five or six months uh, so we should anticipate that sales next week will be down so we tend to use um, uh, these past performances and current circumstances in our forecasting uh, of future financial statements so new companies typically base their forecast on an estimate of sales and, and again the key being on estimating and we're trying to estimate as best we can. When we look at industry averages or some, uh, the experience of similar startups regarding the cost of goods and sold in order. So we're kind of trying to gather information from everywhere to help us uh, forecast this by looking at other companies. So again, you know, for your assessment, your new startup, well, how have other people done in trying to do what you're trying to do at the startup stage? Is there any evidence out there and, and, and that would help us forecast? And of course, budgets are the itemized uh, forecast of a company's income, expenses, and capital needs. That's a mouthful. And an important tool for financial planning. And you will also have to do a budget or forecast uh, of income and expense for your assessment. And uh, so we can say that a budget is an itemized, and literally that's where we write out each item uh, and we forecast uh, that item's future uh, income expense depending on whether the item is an income or an expense uh, financial ratios we won't spend too much time on that today but they depict relationships between items on a company's um, financial statement so we might say that something is or how something is comparing compared to something else from a previous time uh, and an analysis of financial ratios help a company determine whether it is meeting its financial objectives and how it stacks up against its industry or competition. Just finally, the importance of financial management. Many experienced entrepreneurs stress the importance of keeping on top of financial management of the company, and I, of course, would agree with that there. Uh, sometimes, particularly in the startup stage, it's just very ex it's a very exciting stage, and it's all go. Um, uh, but keeping on top of, of these financial issues, uh, they're just, you know, they are of utmost importance. Uh, this is just a little sort of the process again, introducing you to the process of financial management. Uh, the first thing that we would do uh, is prepare a historic financial statements, so income statements, balance sheets, and these are historic. So if we're um, uh, an established company or we've been around for four or five years, we prepare historic financial statements. And then we, of course, prepare our forecasts for next year, uh, preparation of pro forma financial statements, and we'll look at those in a moment, and ongoing analysis of financial results. So again, just financial statements um, and, and the financial statement that you will be doing will, I guess, be a pro forma financial statement, but a historical financial statement reflects past performance 
and are usually prepared on a quarterly and annual basis. And they are usually what happens is the board of management or the management team will sit down with the accountant or the financial director of the company and the financial director takes the team through the uh, previous quarter or previous three months uh, financial statements. And of course, at the final end of year meeting, the annual figures would be discussed as well. Uh, so just again, uh, important that everybody involved in the in the company is, is kept up to date. Publicly traded companies are required to prepare financial statements and make them available to the public, and they are. Um, and I think something interesting over COVID, uh, even at the minute, I've seen that Apple, um, they have uh, released their recent figures, and, and while they're quite good, because they didn't... Um, make any future predictions their share value dropped um, and um, but publicly traded companies are required by law to prepare financial statements and to make them available to the public um, and this is because the public will decide whether or not to trade in the company shares if they want pro forma financial statements are projections so as opposed to historical which reflect on past performance these are future these projections for future periods based on forecasting or guessing, uh, evidence-based guessing, and are typically completed for two to three years in the future. Uh, and that's good planning. We do short, medium, and, and long-term future planning in finance. Pro forma financial statements are strictly planning tools. They can't be hard factual. Uh, three types of historical financial statements. So one is an income statement, which reflects the results of the operation over a period of time. Uh, it looks at uh, revenues or incomes and expenses for that period, and uh, if the company is making a profit or loss. The balance sheet is just a snapshot of the company's assets, which are its fixed assets, which might be the value of the, the building or the cars or the computers or the 3D printers or whatever the company owns, its liabilities, which are its debts, and owner's equity, uh, which is the owner's share of the, of the profits at a specific point in time. And the statement of cash flow summarizes the changes in a company's cash position over a specific period of time, and of course why these changes might have occurred. So just looking at forecasts, because that's what we have to do for our assessment. We're going to, uh, if you like, do a, a sales or a, a expenses and incomes budget. And uh, we'll go through that in class. But what we can say is that forecasts, uh, the analysis of a company's historical financial statements are followed by the preparation of forecasts. And we've said that already. Uh, historical statements look at the past and forecasts look at the future. Forecasts are a prediction of companies' future sales, expenses, income, and capital expenditure. And we're going to look at these three uh, income, expenses, and capital expenditure. And you are going to be forecasting these for your assessment. A company's forecast provides the basis for its pro forma financial statements. Uh, a well developed set of pro forma financial statements helps a company create accurate budgets build financial plans and manage its finances and it's you know it's important that a uh, for a company that it, that its budgets are accurate and that its financial plans are strong um either from an investment point of view uh, but just that you don't get caught out uh, as an entrepreneur you know you may think the business is in good shape and if, if it's been mismanaged and um you know something out of the ordinary happens which happens a lot in business um that you're prepared for that that you're not caught by uh having less cash in the bank or, or something like that there a uh, sales forecast is a projection of the company's sales for a spe specified period and, and we talked about this before uh again predicting sales how do i predict the amount of uh, stakes that I'm going to sell in my restaurant next week. Well, I look at last year's figures and I look at current uh, uh, environment to see if anything is on toward or has changed, or maybe this year we're up week on week by maybe two or three percent. So I can sort of predict how many stakes that I might sell in my restaurant this year based on the slight growth that we've experienced already this year 
and based on last year's sales figures that should be enough that i can put in a uh, an order to my supplier for x amount of stakes so it is the first forecast developed and is the basis for most of the other forecasts so you make your annual forecasts uh, and then uh, month quarterly monthly and weekly uh, sales forecast for new companies based on good faith estimates of sales so <laughs> it's based on good faith which is you know we have to accept that well if my head chef orders 20 stakes for next week well he he's making it in good faith he's he's you know he's we have to trust that he's not just plucking that number out of out of the air and on average an industry averages are the experience of similar startups so a sales forecast for an existing company is based on one record of past sales two its current production ca capacity and product demand and three factors that will affect its future product Okay, good. Uh, I've put this in here, which is just a little graph. I'm not going to spend too long. And it was basically Netflix uh, subscribers, net sales, net income, different things like that there. And we have regions in here. This is the United States and Canada, and, uh, Europe and Middle East. Um, but anyway, uh, the reason that I put them in, put them in, put, them, put it in here is uh, just it gives you an idea of net growth. And, you know, if I was predicting, if you were to predict 2020s figures here, you would of course maybe put it up here somewhere or it's given the sort of 25 20 percent growth then uh, we might go okay well this year we can maybe predict uh 22 percent growth or even you you might want to have been a little bit more cautious and say well we've dropped five percent there so we're to, our growth dropped 20 even though we grew the, the percentage of growth dropped and maybe this year percentage of growth will be 18 percent which is still Excellent and takes us up to whatever 180,000, 185,000, whatever it is. That would be a fairly good guess uh, based on those figures, you know, a fairly, or probably just not good guess, fairly pragmatic guess based on evidence. And however, if we take current trends, we know that coronavirus and Netflix has, Netflix has grown through the roof this year because of coronavirus. So Again, some things just can can appear out of nowhere that do um, um, boost growth, and that may have a, an impact on future um, uh, growth percentages. But you know, it's, it's just there to have a look at for you, and, and a good example of uh, how you might go about forecasting based on pre-existing information. So forecasts of costs of sales and other items. Well, once a company has completed its sales forecast, it must forecast its cost of sales, which is, uh, well, how much does, does the cost of sales cost? And obviously, you know, okay, we've sold 20 of these products, but how much did it cost us to make these products? And uh, how much is it going to cost us to make these products next year? And the most common way to do this is to use the percentage of sales method, uh, so you might say a percentage of our sales is going to go towards um, production. Uh, and that's pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, pro forma financial statements, and, and we'll just finish quickly with this. A company's pro forma financial statements are similar to its historical. So it's the same kind of thing, except the historical ones uh, look at the past, the pro formas look at the future. Um, and we can say that these pro forma financials are necessary for a company uh, seeking funding or financing. Good. Uh, and again, the three types of pro forma financial statements are uh, the pro forma income statement, which shows the projected results of the operations of a company over a specified period of time. And this is probably the most uh, closest to what your assessment question is based on uh, producing uh, future income uh, which will include expenses and uh, costs pro forma balance sheet and statements of cash flow which are uh, the same shows projected snapshot of assets liabilities and owner equity at a specific point of time and shows the projected flow of cash into and out of the company for a specified period of time so again dealing with the future as opposed to historical statements Ah, there we go. Now, that was uh, hopefully not 
I don't want to say not too boring because some people love uh, financial uh, statements. Uh, but uh, as I said, it was just to introduce you to the concepts and um, give you an idea of what uh, what the important things are in from a financial point of view in running a business. And uh, of course, there are uh, degree courses and much more in in financial management uh, for this subject. We're looking at getting just a, a good understanding of, of the financial management of a company. So uh, we'll leave it there. We'll discuss this obviously in, in our class if you're part of our class and if you're not part of our class. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it helped you uh, to introduce you to uh, the uh, basic concepts of financial management. Uh, thank you very much and I hope you have a good time. Talk soon.